Hello everybody. Uh, this is a tutorial of how to set up the Plex plugin in Movie Poster. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do uh, in Movie Poster, right click anywhere on the poster area and go to settings. We're going to be concerned with the plugin options tab and then the Plex plugin. Now this is a fresh install so these are all default settings. Uh, we'll go top to bottom through each of these options to explain what they are. Um, first thing you want to do is activate the plugin. Uh, this indicates that the plugin will load when Movie Poster starts. Uh, if this is unchecked, uh, this plugin is not active. Uh, now I'm currently using version 2.3.0.5, uh, which does support multiple active plugins. Uh, so you'll see if we click through some of these others, the manual now playing plugin is active. Uh, the Clyde Escape plugin is not, uh, Cody and MB are also not active, but if you want to configure those for alternative players, you could have them all active at the same time. Now the priority field indicates which player has priority over the other in the event that multiple movies are playing simultaneously across different players. So by default, manual now playing has priority number one. Uh, as you see by the tooltip there, a lower value does indicate higher priority. Um, so pl plugin priority of one means that this takes precedence over any other plugin that's playing. Uh, if you don't want that to happen, you would want to lower that priority by increasing the value to something higher than your other plugins. Um, so by default, Plex has priority of two. You could change that to three or four if you wanted uh, Cody or MB to have a higher priority. Server address. Uh, this is the loopback address that's put in there by default. Uh, this needs to be the IP address of your Plex server if you are not using the Plex web service. Um, using the IP address is much more uh, reliable and it's the method that I would recommend. Um, I do happen to know the IP address of my Plex server. Uh, and this is going to be a little bit different to figure out depending on the OS that your Plex server is running on. Uh, if you're running on Windows, it's quite simple. Uh, you can just open up a command prompt and type in the ipconfig command to get your address. And that would be the IPv4 address, uh, which you can find right here. Um, now, I'm not actually running on Windows. Uh, my Plex server is running on Unraid, um, which the address that I'm going to need to put in here is my Plex server address of 192.168.0.156. That will most likely be different for you. The server port, uh, by default, uh, Plex uses port 32400. If you have configured this differently, you probably already know it, uh, but you, you will need to put that uh, server port in there if you've changed it. Now, the device ID to watch setting, uh, this is the one where most people do tend to run into trouble if they have a problem. This does need to match exactly what the client device name is. Now, some devices and apps um, do allow you to change that ID. Uh, some do not. Um, I'll be using an NVIDIA Shield for this demonstration. That is a device that does allow you to change that name. Uh, I'm not going to go through that in detail since it does vary by device and by the app version. So you need to look that up uh, for your particular device. But to find out what it is, uh, there are a couple methods you can use. Uh, the easiest of which is to go to your Plex dashboard. Um, move this out of the way a little bit. And under the activity icon here, go to dashboard. And you'll see this now playing section. Right now there is nothing being played. Uh, so I'm going to go to my shield and I'm going to start playing a movie. And we'll see that pop up here in just a second. So you'll see Ford v Ferrari is playing. And we'll mute that. Alright, sorry about that. Okay, so you'll see the now playing status here. Uh, if you click this little icon here that says show details, that will actually show you what's playing, what the encoding status is. What we're interested in right here is uh, after the app version, it shows the device name. Uh, so for us, that's Shield Android TV. Another place you can find this, 
Uh, if you scroll down and you find the play history, click view full history, this will show you the playback status for anything played recently. Uh, if we expand this out a little bit, get a little bit better view. Uh, we'll also see here Shield Android TV is the device that I'm using here. Um, you'll also see some other devices uh, listed that I've uh, played media on recently. So in the device ID to watch field, we'll enter that in exactly as it was shown. Okay. Uh, the next options here are for a slightly different communication method. Um, use MyPlex. Uh, we're actually going to uncheck that in this example. Um, that indicates that the plugin would communicate with the uh, Plex web servers uh, in order to authenticate and log into your Plex server. Um, that can be used to configure the Plex plugin to communicate with a Plex server that is not on your local network. Uh, however, it is less reliable uh, and it, it will fail if the Plex web servers are down for whatever reason. And actually right now there does appear to be an issue with authentication, so I can't demonstrate it. Um, but to configure it's really straightforward, you simply put in your Plex username and your Plex password. Um, just know that with this box checked, the local IP setting above will not be used and it will get routed through the Plex web servers. Uh, so if you want to use the local address, as I recommend, uncheck the MyPlex box. Uh, use library uh, allows the uh, media library in your Plex server to be used for um, posters to get pulled down uh, for the normal poster rotation. And only recent will limit that to the most recent 25 movies that have been added to your server. Now, if you'd like to test the connection, uh, simply click the test connection button. And if we've done everything correctly here, we'll get a success message in a few seconds. If you do choose to use the MyPlex option, this will take slightly longer as it does have to reach out to the Plex servers and then get routed back into your local network, which does add a little bit of latency. Uh, so we'll see there, success, connected to Meyer NAS, Ford v Ferrari is playing on NVIDIA Shield Android TV. Then save our settings. And after movie poster restarts, we should see a nice now playing screen with the Plex plugin loaded. And there we go, we see the manual now playing plugin has loaded, and the Plex plugin should load shortly thereafter which it did. As you see down here in the lower of the movie poster window, the Plex plugin is running and connected to my Plex server. We have our now playing status along with metadata and there you go. Alright, one other area that uh, some people do need to look at uh, depending on your Plex server settings uh, under the settings section, go to network. And this depends a little bit on the Plex server version that you're running. For some people, this is required. For others, it's not. Uh, but if you scroll all the way to the bottom here, uh, you'll find a section that's a list of IP addresses and networks that are allowed without authentication. You may need to put in the IP address or the addresses and net mask entries for um, the PC that's running movie poster. This will allow it to connect to Plex without it being rejected uh, for security reasons. Um, the example you see here, 192.168.0.1 slash 255.255.0.0, that will allow any device within the 192.168 range to connect. So if your movie poster PC has a uh, variable IP address, um, that's a good way to configure that. Uh, if you have a static address assigned and you know what it is, you can simply put that individual address in there. Now one question that does come up from time to time is what if I have multiple devices that I'd like to show playback status for? 
and you can do that. Um, Plex, uh, or sorry, Movie Poster does actually support um, multiple plugins, um, multiple Plex plugins. In fact, uh, if you open up your Movie Poster install directory and you find the plugins directory, you'll see in here a folder for each of the media interfaces. Uh, if you open one of these up, there's a bunch of files in there. These are the program files that are used for the communication for each individual plugin. And if you simply make a copy of that entire folder, that will create another instance of the plugin. Uh, so in this case, we'll rename that to Plex Media Interface Plugin 2. Now, the next time that we run Movie Poster, you'll actually have two instances of the Plex plugin that you're able to configure. And if you'd like to set those to each look at a different device, you can. So what I'm going to do for demonstration, I'm going to go back to my dashboard, and on my phone, I'm going to play something. While that's loading up, if we go into settings and the plugin options again, you'll see we have two tabs for Plex. Uh, this is the tab for the configuration we did previously. This is the configuration of our new one. Now you'll see the priority on both of these is both set to two by default. Um, you do have to choose one that you want to be higher priority than the other. Uh, this is the tiebreaker to resolve any conflicts of things that are played at the same time. Um, so I'm going to set this one to 3. Uh, this will be the one... Well, actually, no, let's do it the other way around. Let's uh, set the old one to 3, since that one's currently playing. The new instance to 2. We'll set that to active. Put in our server address. Clear these fields out. Now, again, the device ID to watch. We need to determine what that is. Uh, let me pick something to play here. I'm going to play something on my phone and we'll go back. Now you'll see that in the activity there are two activity feeds. And we'll see that we have another movie playing here. And this one is playing on Galaxy S10e. That's, that's the value we're going to put in for this device ID to watch. And everything looks correct. We can test our connection again. Make sure we have everything right. Just a second. There we go. We have our success message. That is the movie that's playing, so that is accurate. Again, we'll save. So as of right now, I do have media playing on my shield as well as on my phone. So when this comes up, both plugins should load. And the priority designation will resolve the conflict of which playing status is shown as soon as they both load up. And we'll give it just a second. There we go. So the plugins have both pulled their status. Um, this is the movie that's playing on my phone. Now, if I do stop that, it should, after a little while, uh, pick up that only the movie on the shield is playing, and it will revert to that now playing status. And there we go. So that's how you configure multiple Plex plugins.